Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So this is a slightly different view than you're normally getting when I'm in this room, but um, I've had a delivery come uh, earlier today and I haven't had the chance to open it yet, but that works out pretty well for you guys because I know that some of you like to see me um, getting my uh, packages opened on, on video. So um, what do you think might be in here? Well, clearly it's a sword-shaped object, isn't it? But this has actually come uh, from my friends at the Langsnecht, um, Landsnecht, I can never say that word, Landsknecht, um, Emporium. And uh, they are famous for making certain type of swords. So for those of you who don't know their work, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, kind of blow my load and tell you uh, what's inside here straight away. Let's see if you can guess. So I just thought I'd do a quick uh, first impressions kind of opening, unveiling, whatever, um, on screen uh, and, and get your guys, get you guys, uh, get your first impressions, you know, first thoughts. Um, so this is not going to be a review at this stage. Uh, it's simply an unboxing. Um, but I've been quite uh, excited to get this um, package. And uh, there are... There's more than one object in here, uh, which I will be doing reviews of. Um, and I have been an admirer of uh, these guys' um, products. And I should mention, of course, there's a link to their, uh, to their site below. Um, I've been an admirer of their stuff for quite a while, and uh, they've been building up a reputation and a name for themselves uh, quite rapidly, actually, in the HEMA community. Um, so I should mention I know I know almost nothing about guitars or guitar cases. Have I got this the right way around? Yeah, I have. Right, so let's. Right, so let's see if that's enough to open it. I think it. Oh, is that one locked? That one seems to. Okay, that one's open. Why is that one not opening? Let's see. There's an unexpected hurdle in the um, in the opening process. Shall I just force it? Mm, am I supposed to do that? I don't know. Uh, ah, there we go. It was just it was just stiff. Right. Um, so oh, okay. Will it open? Will it open? Yes. Okay, so you can probably see there are, that's a really nice case. I might have to get myself one of these. That is really cool. Um, so guitar cases, there you go. You can fit sword-like objects in them. So I've given you a bit of a clue there. Um, there is one, two, three objects here. Okay, so let's unwrap this one first. Okay, so that's, as you can see, it's fairly large. Uh, it seems to be in a scabbard, so I don't have to be too worried about sharp edges. Obviously, if you're opening up sword-like objects, then always be super, super careful. Um, oh, wow, this is cool. Right, can you guys guess what this is yet? There we go. I'll give you a... just realised it was off camera. There is a glimpse. Can you guess what that might be? Let's um, carefully, because obviously I don't want to damage what's underneath, just cut off this this tape um, and I have to say also kudos to the um, I think this came with was this FedEx or DHL I think it was FedEx but it got to me in like two days and whilst in the UK we have some pretty stupid laws about importing certain things this came straight to my door in like two days because I just made sure that my insurance documents were all attached and everything right Oh, this looks amazing. Okay, let's... There we go. As I said, this is not going to, by long stretch, this is not going to be a full review. I'll do full reviews of each of these three objects. Um, this is just a kind of first impressions and first look. Uh, for you folks, so <laughs> so can you? Do, how many of you recognise that? Well, it's a sword. Some of you'll be saying, I'm sure. Look at that. So 
it is, it's not any old sword, so it's like a long sword size um, grip um, hilt with a um, cross guard and a bit on the side there that some of you will know is a nagel. Nagel. Um, look at that. That is so cool. <laughs> wow, that is super cool. So it's it's a uh, Kriegmesser, as they're sometimes called. So uh, Langmesser. So many people would just refer to these as a messer. Okay, but in literal terms, if you're German, uh, you will know. And even if you you know speak a bit of German, you'll know messer just means knife. So one of the big differences um, in German medieval German texts is that these are referred to as big knives rather than swords, although. There's, that's a complicated topic, which I'm not going to get into here, but this, this type of single-edged doesn't have to be curved. Some are straight, incidentally. Uh, so some are straight, some have a false edge up here, some are, um, but they're pretty much all single-edged predominantly. But the typical ones like these, sometimes they have clipped points, sometimes they have this more kind of saber shape. So this is, I mean, essentially it's a two-handed saber, isn't it? But it's got it's kind of like a long sword grip, but you'll notice there is no, on this example, there is no defined pommel. There is just a grip uh, with a cross guard. So it's got a nice big cross guard, and then very characteristically, they have this uh, plate on the side, which is known as a nagel, or nagel, I think maybe it's pronounced, uh, which translates to nail, uh, because it sticks through like a nail and is riveted on that side. But I'll talk more about that when I actually do dedicated videos on these. And this, I should mention, is sharp. Yep, feels pretty sharp. Um, but that's lovely. It's got a lovely flat grip, so you really feel the edge alignment. But I'm, I'm saying too much. Of course, I will talk more about that when I actually do the video about it. Um, oh, that's sticking a bit in the scabbard, so I'll just leave that there for now. But the uh, it has two little knives that fit into the uh, scabbard down here. Um, there we go. Little uh, eating knives, essentially, or utility knives. Maybe that one is something else. Maybe it's a... Oh no, it is another knife. I guess sometimes it might be something like a fork or something. But anyway, I'll put that one down. Let's have a look and see the other two. So this has also got a pretty long grip on it. Cut through the tape on that. Oh, this, this one has no scabbard on it, so I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful uh, with this one. Sorry, I realize that's just off camera for um, some of you. Sorry about the noise of the rustling plastic, but obviously there's nothing I can do about that. It's the nature of the beast. Um, I mean, I'll just mention briefly as well that a lot of people talk about the possibility that messers or lang messers were a sword type that came about to circumvent the laws around either carrying or making swords and therefore kind of going, ah, oh, I'm not carrying a sword, I'm carrying a big knife. Uh, that doesn't actually seem to be true. <laughs> uh, that seems to be an urban myth. Um, but uh, it's not something that I've actually researched a lot myself, so I'm not going to say too much. Oh, wow, so, so it's another uh, Kriegsmesser. This has a more curved blade at the end. And I don't know whether you'll be able to see in this light, but this actually has a fuller, a shallow fuller on both sides up the, just by the spine of the blade, where I'm kind of hovering my fingers over up there. It has a nagel, this one's a more flat nagel instead of a, um, or nagel, in, instead of a, a kind of curved one. It has quite a similar grip and it has a slightly simple, more simple guard. It doesn't have the added sort of knobs on the end that the other one has. Uh, it's a, just it's just a bit smaller as well. This is a kind of smaller, more, um, slightly more nimble one, uh, shorter, shorter blade. Um, but that is a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's essentially the, the love child of a, of a long sword and a saber. So if you like sabers and you like long swords, well then maybe you should get one of these. Again, their uh, website is linked below here. Right, let's quickly open, uh, I don't want to, as I said, I don't want to say too much about these at this stage because I'll be having a proper good look at them individually. Let's have a look at this one. So, as you can probably tell from the size, this is more of a kind of one-handed sword size, less, um, less kind of long swordy grip. Um, that's, uh, <clears throat> this one seems to be wrapped more, more tightly. That's, uh, Oh, 
This is uh, very well wrapped. So, you know, I have to say they've been, uh, Adam and um, the guys at Langsnet um, Emporium have been a, a pleasure to, to deal with uh, and to chat to. They seem like lovely people. Um, and as I say, their company seems to be going leaps and bounds, seems to be really going forward at the moment. And they're the first company really that I'm aware of who have specialised in the manufacture of messers. So, you know, there are other people out there making messers, but they are the first company that I'm aware of who really have made their name making messers. It's what they specialise in. That being said, they do make other things. I think they, you know, they make knives um, and they also have started making fetish shirts as well. So, um, long swords for sparring. And so they do make other stuff. Um, there we go. So that, as you can see, is a more traditionally shaped. Um, I'm going to have, it's going to take me longer to unwrap all of the um, scabbard, but there, I can assure you there's a scabbard in there and various other bits of what looks like a full suspension system in there. Um, so I'll have to take a little bit more time to do that off camera, but this is a more traditionally sized and shaped lang messer. Um, that is more akin to what you see in a lot of the treatises like Le Kuchner and, you know, Talhofer, um, Codex Wallerstein, things like this. And that is a more nimble uh, one-handed sword. And that is a really lovely thing. It's really lovely to hold. I personally, as regular viewers of this channel will know, I'm, um, I'm, uh, I'm really in favour of grips that are quite flat and so that's one thing this style of uh, knife grip gives really really good edge alignment and I really really like how it feels in the hand because it gives really good you're not going to accidentally hit with well I suppose anybody could could accidentally hit with the flat but you're, you've got natural really good edge alignment with this type of grip it's also notable I mean for anybody who's not familiar with Langmessers and again I'll talk more about this in future videos now that because I've never had a Langmesser before now that I've got one here to talk about I will do a, a few videos about this although I'm far from an expert on these swords but one of the curious things when we compare these to swords from all over history and from all over the world is the extra long grip. And it's so long that you could put two hands on it. And not to say that that wasn't sometimes done, but when we look at the treatises, they aren't used in that way. It does seem that that extra bit of grip length there is predominantly there for perhaps for, for balance to some extent. And it's also used for hooking actions. So most often when we're looking at the techniques, if we look in uh, Le Kuchner, for example, or even Dürer, uh, Dürer, the famous artist Albrecht Dürer, um, you know, does a, did a, essentially pictures for a treatise. I don't think it's got any text, but that shows some um, Langmesser techniques in it. And um, these, this end of the pommel, uh, this end of the grip, is used for hooking in all sorts of different ways. Um, and, you know, sometimes you see these um, half sorted with used in this way uh, in close actions, used as a, as a point of leverage and to direct the point. Um, so they're, as well as being a kind of almost machete-like blade, really, uh, they're used in quite diverse ways. And you can see they've got a very effective point on them as well. So, you know, they're fearsome cutters, um, but, clearly with good good points also. Right, okay, so I'm not gonna talk more about these. I'll talk about them individually. I'll do individual videos on each of these. Uh, but thank you very much to Landsnecht, uh, and one day I will learn to say that word, Emporium. Link below to, uh, to their uh, webpage if you wanna look up more of their stuff and see what they do and see their offerings and their very reasonable prices and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing element of this. I thought I couldn't let you guys miss out on that. I wasn't going to be so selfish as to do that myself uh, without anyone else around. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed that and I'm certain you'll enjoy the future videos that I'm going to do featuring these. Um, and um, yeah, uh, maybe we'll um, do some cutting uh, with one of these as well uh, if I can get some decent cutting targets in. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys uh, really soon for some more uh, Messer action. <laughs> Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.